What's your name? Jonathan Barzinski. Name? Alex. Come on, Alex, damn it! Alexander Beverly Johnson. Where did you go to school? Uh, St. Joseph's. It's a Catholic school. Here's what I want to get across to you. Going out of prison is in many ways harder than coming in. There are a lot of people out there that would wish that you could spend the rest of your life in prison and never see the street again. People think that all their problems are gonna disappear when they walk out those gates, but it's not true. And you're gonna have a tendency to lash out, to get angry, to get frustrated. But if you do that, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna get locked up again. And there's no third chance. This is it for you. You owe it to yourself not to fuck it up. Got it? Yeah, I got it. Looks like your last week of training went pretty well. You feeling comfortable about your transfer? Guess uh, I slipped up an hour ago. Figure I'm kind of nervous. You're nervous, Alex? Why are you nervous? Because I'm gonna be alone. Oh, well, not exactly. Mr. Damato is taking you in, and he's promised to look after you. You know, I've met him a few times. He seems like a very good person. Have you spoken to him yet? Talked to him on the phone, he seems okay. Good. So, here is your ID, and your social, and in here, you will find $2,000 in cash. This is just a little something to help you get started, and I need you to be very responsible with this, okay? And this is your monitor. Give me your leg. Never try to take it off, because any tampering will send us an immediate signal. And you're not to discuss the monitor with anyone. And no traveling outside the tri-state area, because if you do, that'll be the end of that. And you are never to contact Robert Langley or your parents. Are we clear? Alex? I need to hear you say it. It's clear. Good. 
If you run into any problems whatsoever, I do not want you running away. Call us. Here's my card. Welcome to your new life. About her. Alex, I'm sorry that we haven't discussed your family more thoroughly. You know, uh, Mom? Your father's death was very hard on her, as you know. The, the whole situation was quite an ordeal, especially for her. Now, as you know, she's remarried and has two daughters, and, uh, well, Alex, she's asked that you not get in touch with her. She's trying very hard to rebuild her life, and uh, I don't think she has your coping skills. And she's just going to need some more time before she reestablishes a, a rapport with you. Eight years isn't enough. Some people need more time. We guarantee first-rate maneuvering and parking lessons from carefully selected certified driving instructors. And if you would like to sign up a friend, we offer an additional 15% rebate. Nah, it, it, it's just for me. Okay, okay then. If you would fill this out, please. Of course, much has been said about the Roman influence on the architecture of the Reich. But if you pay closer attention, you'll realize it was really Paris that Speer wished to emulate. Now, notice how the Grand Boulevard runs from this Grand Central-like train station preceded by a ridiculously grand eloquent Arch of Triumph, built to dwarf all other Arches of Triumph, to a great domed hall, not unlike the Invalides in shape and function. A conflict between Speer and Hitler resided specifically in the nature of this boulevard. Now, Hitler believed it should be made into a staid center of power, which Speer feared would render the area lifeless. Now, Speer believed that the boulevard should be, in his own words, a sales display of German goods, much like the original Champs Elysees, both so blatantly wished to emulate. It used to be a family business. My family owned it, but due to gentrification and rising rents and stuff like that, uh, we had to kind of diversify. So now we have it as a place where people can come and work on their own bikes. Uh, we do maintenance over there. Um, that's Megan. She's working with a client. Hopefully she can get us some money coming in. Hey, Elsa. Hi. 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 Hi.
Hi. Let me introduce you to Alex. Nice to meet you. He'll help you with anything you need. Inventory, cup of coffee. All right, let me show you your station. Over here. You have a seat. Now, I need you to clean the gook off the gasket so Tom can receive the valve, okay? Then once you do that, uh, I want you to go back there in that room and I need you to put inventory on all those parts. Then once you get inventory on all those parts, check in with Elsie so to see which ones match, okay? Yeah. So you have plenty of stuff to start out with. Enjoy. John, this is my sister Sophie. Sophie, this is John. Hi. This is the second time that he got all shy around me. Are you a shy boy? A little. Enough. Let's do a round of shots. No, I, no, no, no. I don't drink. There's none of that here. Let's do a round of shots. Can we do no, it? Seriously, we get I don't drink. None of that here. Buddy, I don't know anybody that does any good for you, but we are in the prime of our youth. Fuck it! <laughs> Let's do it. Here we go. Drink that. Thank you. You got yours? You ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. An old pro. <laughs> Here, a toast to John. May he come out of his tiny turtle like shell. Here we are. Cheers. <laughs> there you go. Woo!
come in. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Have a seat. How was your first week? It was okay. Um, classes are interesting. I signed up for driving lessons. Oh, great. That's yeah. Do I smell booze? No. Have you been drinking? No. John, you reek of alcohol. What the fuck? I had a few drinks last night. Look, if it was up to me, I don't give a fuck what you put in your body. If circumstances were different, I'd buy you a drink. I'd get you drunk. We'd have a blast. But it's not like that. You cannot afford to fuck this up. One slip up. One simple fucking slip up. And you and Michael and me are going back to the fucking starting point. We're fucked. Tell me you understand me. Yes, I understand you. God damn it, John. God damn it. You're not a fucking idiot. Don't act like one. What you doing tonight? Stuff. Stuff. Well, my wife, she works pretty late and I hate to have to wait for her on my own. What she do? She manages a movie theater. The slips don't match. Is this guy for like real? I can come in here at the end of the day and just I mean, I was born in the have day. a theater to myself. <laughs> it's like relaxing. But I must apologize because normally the movies are a lot better than this, man. This is. This is terrible. Why? Because it is. I mean, I feel like I already know what's going to happen. Like, from the opening scene, why? As a matter of fact. So, you really like the man eating aspect of that thing? Yeah, it was cool. Don't do too much for me, man. It's because you're too old. Maybe I am. Hi. Maybe. Oh, so. Mm. <laughs> Carmen, this is the young man I was telling you about. This is hey. my beautiful wife. It's nice to meet you. Hi. Alex is his name. Right. <laughs> well, look. I guess it's time for us to get going. Hey, Alex, if you ever want to do this again, uh, just hang out, man. Feel free to give me a call, all right? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yes, You'll come over for dinner sometime soon? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ready? Let's go. Okay. All right, take care, buddy. We're sorry. You have reached a number that is no longer in service. If you feel that you have reached... Yeah. I'd like a number for Buffalo. Buffalo, New York. Langley. Jim. James. James Langley. What about Elizabeth Langley? Now I'm Buffalo. All right, thanks.
Hi. You must be John. I'm Ned. I'm a driving instructor. Okay, sir. Start it up. Let's get going. Good. Oh, you're doing great. Now we're going to make a left up here. Mm -hmm. Whoop. Stop that stoplight. Ease up on it. Good. Stop. <sighs> so, John, where are you from? I'm actually from Millsboro. Yeah. I think I know where that is. What school did you go to? Uh, the Jesuits. Uh, it's the boarding school. Oh, Jesuits. Mm. They're very strict, huh? Jesuits. Not really. No? Really, they're not into the whole corporal punishment kind of thing? No, no. They're more into mutual respect. Okay, you can go. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing my part. This is how it goes. Yeah. And I appreciate it. Cool. All right. Thank you, President. Yeah, take care of yourself. You too. What's happening, bud? <laughs> that was just your parole officer, Presna. He was coming by to check up on you. You were busy cleaning the bike. We chatted. Nothing to worry about. That's all. And? I told him you were doing good and you were slowly making yourself comfortable here. What about? Oh, then. Don't worry about that. I have visitors in here all the time. They don't know who that was. It's okay, Alex. Seriously, it's okay. What's up, my man? You got something on your mind? Hey, well, look. Got something I want to talk to you about. I've been speaking with Carmen, and I don't know if this is something you'd be into, but we'd like to invite you to move in with us. Yeah, we have an extra room and we've been keeping it clean and you know, it doesn't have to be permanent, of course. But we figured until you get yourself on your own, find your own spot, you'd be more comfortable staying with us than in some crummy motel, man. Now, you don't have to pay, but we will give you some chores to do in return. So what do you think? <laughs> And that's a yes. <laughs> Good, let's shake on it.
nice shot. Hey. Hi. So this is what it takes to get you to talk to me? Do I make you nervous? Kinda. I like that. Go to the police in the morning and I'll vouch for you. I can't do that. What else did it do? I gotta get out of here. <sighs> Jesus, Alex. That's the only thing I can do. Where do you wanna go? I gotta go up north, find somebody up there. Who? Your family? My family's gone. What do you mean they're gone? Like they're not here anymore. I need you to help me take this monitor off. <laughs> I can't do that. I can't be an accomplice to that. Yeah, I'm not. I'll give you some tools. I need you to drop me out of the city. You must be joking. Please. You can take that bike over there. If you get caught, don't mention my involvement with any of this. I just say you stole it. You're on your own. You hear me?
the fuck out of here. I believed in you, Alex. You disappointed me. See you in the next life. Ready? Mm -hmm. Definitely ready. Okay. This is something you would not want to normally do. Mm. Three point turnabout in the middle of the road. So, John, why? Easy. Do you wear that monitor on your ankle? I don't think that's any of your business. Turn back around. Perfect. I disagree. And why is that? Because I don't know you, John. If I'm going to teach you to drive, I have to be able to trust you, and I can't trust you if I don't know you. Can I? I was recently released from prison. Really? What were you in for? Drugs. Satisfied. I'm not angry, John. You paid your debt to society, but you understand why I would need to know, don't you? I don't. Hmm. Hello? Yo. Right there? Good. Okay. I'd like another instructor next time. Why? Fine.
Next week, chapter 17. Thank you. John! Can I borrow you for a sec? Sure. Look, I've been correcting your paper, and I'm... I'm just getting the sense that you're not all there. What do you mean? What? Well, it's researched. I mean, your references are there. You've clearly been doing your homework. And you've been paying attention to what we're saying here. It's just... Look, you're a bright kid. But I have no idea who I'm reading. There, there's no point of view. There's no opinion. You're writing about Spear, but you could be writing about Lewis Sullivan or, or Bill Gates, as far as I'm concerned. Is everything okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, then give me more. I've, I've got a feeling you could do really well here, but, but you've got to personalize your work a little for me, okay? Mm. Sure. All right. Have a good weekend. Thanks. What are you in my house, boy? Get up! Get up! What are you doing in my house? So, uh, your door is open. My God! I see broken glass over there. I have nowhere to go. We ain't got nowhere to go. Where's your family? I don't have family. We ain't got no family. How old are you? 21. You're 21? And you got no family? What's your name, son? Michael. Where you from, Michael? Up north, Buffalo. What brings you down here? I was, uh, hiking and then I got lost. No, you live alone? Well, kids are grown. They're gone. Wife passed away last year, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm here alone. Sorry about your wife. Let me tell you something, Michael. Time's gonna fuck you over. You gotta live for the moment. You want more coffee? Use your restroom? Yeah, yeah. Down the hall, second door way on the left. You got 60 seconds to pack your bags and leave. You're a bad liar. I don't believe a word that came out of your mouth. Oh boy, did I fly right out here. Get out. No, 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 no. 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 No! Hey. What are you doing for Christmas? I was gonna meet up with my parents. Why? Well, I was thinking, or rather, Nick and I were thinking, Maybe you could spend it with us. <laughs> Just you and Nick? No, so you can meet my family. Sure, um... Where do they live? Delaware. Why? Nothing. No reason. Just curious. <laughs>
Come in, I didn't touch anything. Sit down. Hey, the other day there was this lady who... I don't know anything about it. Well, I'm telling you, I thought she... I think she might have known that... who I am. Did Michael contact you? No. Why? We've been getting reports that uh, your friend is not holding up his end of the obligations the way he should. What did he... Nothing serious. It's nothing you need to worry about, but uh, even if he mouthed off, he doesn't know anything about you now. How's your love life? Come on, a good-looking guy like you. It's bound to happen, right? What the fuck do you know? John, you're free to live your life. But it's my job to know how you're living it, so it would be nice if you'd work with me on this. This is the beginning of the process. What have you told her about you? The story? Our story? No slip-ups like before? Staying dry and sober. She doesn't want me to meet her parents. Oh, great. When? Uh, I'm supposed to go up with her for Christmas. And where do they live? Delaware. What? John, you know the rules. You can't go. How the hell do you expect me to build something if I have all these fucking rules? I mean, when you tell me I have to assimilate and integrate and, you know, become like everyone else, but now you're, now you're telling me I can't. Maybe further down the line. Right now, John, you can't go. What if I still do? Don't even fucking think about that. I mean, what am I supposed to do? I, I don't know, John. It's complicated. Complicated? Yeah, it's a fucking nightmare. I mean, it's like you're setting me up. Get out. Get out. position in this contract. But you have to understand, um, there's something utterly, um, utterly unsustainable at the very center of it, you know, it's, Good. 
So listen, John. I'm sorry I asked you about your record. That's none of my business. I'm very nosy. Bad habit. I mean, you're on parole, so that means you've paid your debt to society. Right? Look, why are you asking me this? Just head back, okay? Okay. Hey, you're Michael Ayers. It's me, Phil, from up the block. It's been years, man. What you been up to? Phil, how you been? It's been a while. Hey, man. I'm sorry, I forgot. What are you doing here? You're not even supposed to be here, man. Just passing by. Yeah. Man, I'm real sorry about your dad. It happens to all of us. Yeah, but... That ain't right. That just ain't right. Hey, Mike, I hope I didn't say nothing to upset you. I'd be careful if I were you. Well, what do you want to tell me? I, uh... I can't go with you to visit your parents for Christmas. Why? The truth is, I can't tell you. Look, I, I did a really bad thing when I was younger. Now I'm restricted in what I can do and what I can say. And it's gonna be like that for a while. How long? Can't say. 
Are you in trouble? No. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing, and a lot of people want to see me succeed. There's no reason I should fail, but, you know, it's just going to be a while before I can do all the things that everyone else can do. That's what the ankle monitor's about. That's what the ankle monitor's about. Sophie? Sophie. John? Hey. Where are you off to? I am, I just remember I have a class I need to get to, so. I was gonna make us some breakfast. Oh, I know, I know, it sucks, but I'm, I, I'm so sorry, but I need to go. Oh, it's okay, you've got class. Where you headed, man? North. How far? As north as you can take me. Hop in, dude. So what's the gig? shit on me. <laughs> nah, like you said, oh, that's for sure. Yeah. So the question then arises, did Le Corbusier believe that he was in fact promoting and serving the public interest by encouraging a public policy that said that low-income clients would be best served by gathering as many of them as possible into a single compound? John, am I amusing you? Does public policy really amuse you? John. John. John! What's the matter, poor boy? Did you just have an episode? Sorry, I don't know what happened. Well, shape up, man. Shape up, lest you return from whence you came. Hey. Hey, John, you all right? I'm dealing with stuff right now, and it's proving harder than I thought. Well, I hope you know if there's anything I can do, I hope you know to just ask. <laughs> Good. I gotta take a quick leak, man. Sorry. Came by to pick you up for class. Thanks. So, uh, what happened to you last night? I've been trying to deal with this thing I did way back when. And What'd you do? What do you think? I don't know. No, seriously. What could you imagine me capable of doing? You totaled your parents' car. 
worse. Burn their house down? I, I don't know. Way worse. Look, I really don't know and I don't want to know, okay? So come on, let's just go to class. I killed. What? What? What did you just say? I shouldn't say anything. Yeah, yes, you did. Are you fucking with me, man? No. What did you just say? What the fuck? No, I didn't say anything. You're fucking with me and I don't like it, so tell me what you said or I'm out of here right now. Okay. The New York State Department of Corrections put out communicate today announcing that a high-profile ex-convict is suspected of attempted rape and wanted for questioning. Jeffrey Ayers, one of two boys convicted of torturing and killing Jeremy Baylor, a nine-year-old schoolmate, in Buffalo in 2002 has gone missing. Ayers, who was 11 at the time of his trial, was released a few months ago in an unusual arrangement with state authorities in which he was given a new identity in order to reintegrate society. His father, Samuel Ayers, committed suicide shortly after sentencing in a very public display of shame and repudiation by shooting himself in his car in front of City Hall in Kingston, New York. What can be done that is of value to society in an era where society tends towards a disintegration of the bonds that make it such? The ideologies of Now, you have to remember that at the time, there was no sympathy of these kids. What they had done was so monstrous, so beyond the pale, that no one had any second thoughts about trying them as adults. I personally remember reading about this case for the first time back then, thinking, who would raise kids that they do something so unambiguously evil? He totally needs to be put on trial. I mean, he lied. He tortured, he killed hundreds of thousands as far as we know. The powers that be decided long ago that that just wasn't the case. That's that. I mean, seriously, for your own sanity, you should just let it go. But some people can't let these things go. What? Hand, even if they've never been, you know, personally concerned with anything he ever did, they just feel this need to see him pay, this you know, irrational fear, you know, let the witch burn. What? <laughs> you think he was justified in what he did? Everyone's justified in what they do. I mean, you can always explain why he did something and why it was the right thing to do. I mean, you've done bad things and you can explain why you did them, and then suddenly they don't seem so bad anymore. I mean, I've done things that were ugly, but if you ask me how I can do these things, I'll tell, and it all makes sense. Yeah? Like, what did you do? Um, horrible things. Really, um, really nasty things. Well, before you, before you go and justify things, maybe you should do some introspection and figure out what it was you did that was so bad. What are you doing? Just having fun. But it's not fun. It's creepy and it's obnoxious. You say so, okay? You're creeping me out. You're really making a fool out of yourself. Because that's you. You know what? I'm done with this. You can... If you want to go down in flames, suit you. I, I'm out of here. Sophie! So- <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, I was a jerk and I let things get to me. If you want to screw up your life, please just let me know right away. We'll end this right now. Is that what you want? No. No. I, I want to make something of myself. I want to make something of us. You scared me, John. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry.
Hey, baby. I'm so fucking late, it's not even funny. Here's a spare set of keys. So can you lock the door on your way out? Hey. Kiss? What's going on? Uh, finals. Relax, you'll do fine. I gotta go. Why did you do that, John? You were doing so fucking well. Why? Fucking idiot! Tell me you weren't going to use those things. Tell me you weren't going to use those things. Fuck you! Oh. 